Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I wanted to stick to my uh, weekly upload routine, so I'm just going to make a quick video. Uh, viewers Make a Game will be out next week. If you haven't submitted anything, uh, it's going to run again until tonight. Okay, so I wanted to make a video about my thought process of like creating something. So I was walking home from class today and I had the idea that I want to make a module that encompasses keybinds, right? So you can load in a config, which is like a profile for the keybinds. Every key will have a main bind and a potential secondary bind. And I want to hook it into a system where it will automatically display keys for a specific bind in UI. That sounds kind of weird, but uh, let's map it out. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, I'm going to call this the shared domain, and then we got the client and the server domain. I want the binder to exist in the shared domain, and it's, uh, it's going to be more of a util module, sort of. It's going to be like a middleman uh, rather than a designated service. I want it to be kind of independent, right? What I'm thinking is that the client can load binds, so it'll take a config from shared or a table on the client. So the client's going to load the binds with binder, and that's going to be... Uh, the client side of when a key ha press happens. And then I want to also have uh, bind hooks. This is kind of going to be an event. So whenever you press a key, the action that's associated with it. So let's say we have like a UI module. Um, we're going to want it so that when we push G to open the inventory, we can hook in. We'll say binder.hook with a function. And so anytime the key press happens, this hook is going to get called. And so there's going to want to be, I think we're going to want multiple possible hooks for each bind. I think that'll be important. On the server, I'm going to want to write a serializer and a reverse of that. Uh, so we can store the binds uh, to say like a player profile or something in the data store. So that when we load binds, instead of using our config from uh, shared, we're going to use the data store data that we have for the binds. The other thing I want on the client is UI elements, and this is going to be multiple things. And I think I'm going to accomplish this one using uh, tags. And I'll explain what I mean by this later. Uh, but I think the first things that I want to knock out is I want to load the binds and I want to set up some hooks and I want to be able to load a config into the binder on the client side such that our binds and our hooks are kind of meshed together. And then what I'll do is I'll show the UI elements and then I'll explain this uh, using tags. And then lastly, I'm going to write the, the serializer and the deserializer for some of the server stuff. Okay, so something I want to use is input image library, which is a module from Nevermore Engine, which adds the really nice um, UI keybinds that you'll see in some games. Okay, so I'm here in a new place, and the first thing I'm going to do is make my module here. And I'm just going to outline it with all the functions that I think should go in it and do some rough typing just to get an idea of how data is kind of going to flow. Okay, so what I'm thinking is that the bind config is going to look something like this, where we're going to have like a table, and within it, um, we're going to use an ID to uh, talk about to index a bind. So perhaps it would be something like this, where this is the primary bind and this is the secondary bind. Some games like to have secondary binds. Or if we don't want a secondary bind, uh, we'll just make it nil. I think I want the binder to pick up on that. So I'm going to keep writing some more stuff. Okay, so I've written a few functions here, kind of outlined an idea of what I want them to do. So now I'm going to start writing them. I should probably talk about what each one of them does. So uh, like I had said in our design, I want to register binds. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the key code and it's going to hook those key codes into the context action service. And then it's going to connect that context to the relevant hooks. And then uh, when we register a hook, it's going to add a hook to the relevant uh, name for the hook ID. Uh, exporting and importing a config is just for the data store. Okay, so I think I've written some of the base code that I want. Um, you can register binds, register hooks, import, export configs. So, uh, let's hook it up and see if it's working. Okay. So if I play here, okay. So pretty quickly here, I've set it up. So if we push F or Y, it'll fire the second config here, which will fire this second hook. And if we push G, it'll fire the first hook there for the first test. I want to register a second test here or a second hook, do something like this. Boom, just like that. If I hit G, we now have two hooks. And because of the way the game works, if I swap the hooks around for the first test, it should say test 1B and then test 1A. So because of the behavior that I've designed or 
kind of that's happened, I've happened upon here. The order that you register hooks in is the order that the hooks will be executed in. Okay, so all I've done right now is basically write a user input service wrapper or a context action service wrapper. What I want to add now is the ability to modify a keybind. So let's say you have some settings and you want to make it so that you can change a key from G to F. And so what I want to do is I want to make a um, modify bind statement that will update the, the active configuration such that um, it'll delete the old connection here and then it'll re-register it with the new key bind. Okay, so what I've written here is a quick refactor. So I wrote this connect bind function, which is uh, performing this connection down here because I'm gonna reuse it again when I adjust a bind. What we're gonna do is disable the old bind, update the config and re-enable the new bind. And so to do that, I wanted to get this connect bind function out of the register binds there. So then what we're gonna do is uh, to get a hook method, so a hook method is this function that's called when, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen, this is function that's called when you bind an action here is this hook method, which will go through all of the hooks and fire them. So the hook method requires the ID of the bind, the bind ID for each individual hook. So what I thought was, what if I make a function that returns a function, which is um, a function of this ID? So it, it's kind of funky. But what it does is you pass in this ID and it will return a function that is, um, that's oriented towards this specific ID. So what we do is we get the hook method with the bind ID and we simply perform a bind on uh, that hook method. And so that's what this connect bind function does. And then I'm storing the bind connection in a connection cache. So when we update a bind, we're, we're gonna get the previous connection stored. We're gonna modify it with the new information and then we're gonna reconnect it with the new information. So hopefully we should be able to hot swap uh, key binds uh, pretty quickly. Okay, so I've written the code here to update a bind. So what we do is we get the current bind information and we get the current key codes. And then if it's a secondary key code, we update the key. Otherwise, if it's a primary key code, we set it to the first key. Um, I need to add some logic in here saying if it's a secondary key code, it's allowed to be nil. If it's a primary key code, it cannot be nil. There always has to be a key bound, right? Um, we disconnect the old connection. Uh, we get a new connection by reconnecting the bind. And then um, we set this new connection as the uh, connection in the bind cache. That sounds kind of funky, but we basically just replace the connection with the newest uh, context action service binding. And then we update the config with the new information. Okay, so I added a little uh, safeguarder here uh, to make sure that it's an enum. And I'll uh, add another function later that kind of strengthens this up. Okay, so I added a quick if statement here just to check if the key that we put in, if it's not secondary, it's primary, and we just got to check that it's an enum. I'll probably make a function later that fully vets the key that we input to make sure that it's a key code and that it's not bound to something else. And so that's something I got to add. And I'll mark that down as a to-do. To test this, what I did was I updated my config. So there's an output bind and a swap bind. And so for the output hook, it's just going to say this is an output and it'll print the key code. And then for the swap bind, it'll change it to H for the output key. So right now it's G. So the expected behavior should be that I can hit G and it should say this is output G. And then I'll hit F and it'll swap the bind to H. So if I push G, it won't work. But if I push H, it should say this is an output H. So let's try it. So G, this is an output G. We hit F to swap. Then I'm pushing G. Okay, so I just remembered that context action service doesn't use connections. It uses kind of its own manager for binding and unbinding stuff. So I kind of got to rewrite this and then I'll explain it. Okay, so I updated my code. And now if I hit G, it should say this is an output. And then if I hit F, it should update the bind. And here I'm pushing G again. And it won't work if I push G. But then if I start hitting H, which is the new key, it'll start working. Okay, so all I had to do was just unbind the action using context action service instead of a connection. I thought it was a connection. I was being silly. Something I added is a little metadata here, and uh, maybe I'll elaborate on that later. But what I'm really doing is just building stuff in here so that later, if I want to add on, say, um, certain binds are based on a certain state, uh, we could use some of the metadata there for the bind to understand how this uh, bind should operate. Okay, so the last thing I wanna add is exporting the binds so that we can save them to the server, which I believe was the last thing in my drawing that I wanted to add. Okay, so I've updated this here with our new export function. 
So um, what it's going to do is it's going to print, print this initial config that we have defined here. It's going to print the first config that we get from the export. And then after we swap, it's going to export and tell us the new config. So the initial config and the first should match up just like that. And then so if we push G, that's an output. We push F, it's going to update. And we're going to get this new config where output is now H. And if we push H, it should work. OK, so quickly referring back to the kind of draw up that I did, we've added the loading binds, we've added the hooks, we've added the serializer in the reverse. And last thing I want to add is UI elements with tags. So let's look at that. OK, so here I have a keybind example with an image label in the center. And I'll call this, I'll call this bind icon. And so what I'll do is I'll give this a tag of bind icon, and then I'll give it an attribute of bind name, and this one will be swap. And then I'm going to duplicate this, move one over here, move one over there. But this one's swap, and then this one should be output. And so what I want to do is I want to use a module that I'll import right now. So there's this input image library, which includes all these sprite sheets for all sorts of keyboards and uh, inputs. And when you see them, you'll notice them. It's part of Nevermore Engine, and uh, Quenty created it. But I'm going to integrate it in here with this new module that I've created. <clears throat> so what I'm going to add here is this function called init key icons. And what it's going to do is it's going to use the tag service to collect all the icons that exist for a given keybind, and it's going to update them with the required icon based off the key code. And then what I'm going to need to do after that is I'm going to need to add it as a uh, function where it will update them in the update function. Okay, so after some development, it only seems to work on the update. Uh, let's figure it out. Okay, so I've got it working. So within these keybind examples, there's the bind icons. And when I play, it will populate the icon with the key. And if I push G, it'll print the output. And then when I push F, it'll switch the bind to H. And you can see that it's updated the icon too and the H still works. Let's take a look at the code real quick. Okay, so I added a few uh, methods here. Set image just takes the uh, icon image label and sets the image based off the associated key bind, and it'll get the key and style the icon. Update key icons is done um, initially here, and it just updates all existing icons. What we do is when we init each icon, we want to create a signal so that if we add, if we add a new label into the workspace, it'll automatically get its image set when it's loaded in. So I've added the update key icons when we update the bind. And when we register binds, we'll init the key icons and it all works. And you should be able to see that if I make duplicates of the icon, it'll replicate around. This is really helpful because if you want to change icons or have some UI elements on the side here where you have icons, it'll automatically update them. And just to review, let's make sure we've implemented everything I want. So we can load a config into the binder. Uh, we can load binds based off that config. We can bind hooks to those binds. Uh, UI elements get updated using tags. And there's a serializer and a dear serializer that I've added such that you can store it to a data store. So we've covered everything and we've made a pretty good module. But if you want to see me add more, really refine it, finish it up, and then implement it into a project, um, let's say 250 likes, and I'll make another video. If you guys want to see it, make it happen. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.